Welcome back to another episode of the Day After Podcast. What's up, guys? And boy, dude, like that episode, there was quite some, uh, there was quite the, um, there was quite the thing during that challenge. Um, well, mm. the second challenge, we got two challenges this time around. Which they, were I both, was nice. they were both honestly pretty good challenges. Like yeah, they had yeah. some new unique things that we hadn't seen really in previous survivors. So. The floor is lava kind of thing. That mm-hmm. was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the uh, same puzzle pieces making the different, uh, you know, ones. That, that was yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, so there was a lot of like, interesting things that came out of this episode i know during uh that immunity challenge it very iconic in my opinion of like what happened but also there were some kind of uh fun little things people said um i know i'm getting ahead of myself but these were like so fun i love how dwight after he was kind of like uh (laughs) after he was roasted by jeff he was like thank you jeffrey (laughs) I'm like, oh my god! Like, uh, <laughs> I get it. Like, yeah. Jeff kind of roasts you, but that passive aggressive, thank you, Jeffrey. And yeah. then uh, there's also the thank you, Professor, that came out on um, uh, the Baca tribe. Yeah, I, I believe I believe Owen uh, says thank you, Professor, to Gabler. And then yes. Ellie, <laughs> Ellie's just like, oh, don't be sassy. <laughs> there was a lot of, there was a lot of sass um, in that. And then, uh, well, I mean, Gabler was like, there's that whole, that's it thing. And he was like, that's it, that's it, that, that's it. Mm-hmm. And he was shouting that. Yeah. So people are going to look and, you know, try and copy it. Like, mm-hmm. oh my God. Um Gabler was a hot mess this episode. <laughs> he was. He was. Um, but I will say, uh, this episode, it definitely was like, I feel like both uh, Bessie and Baca were really like, no, uh, screw this. Like, it was very yeah. an anti-Coco thing. We wanted yeah. more content from Coco, but good God, they uh, were kind of sent through the ringer this episode. Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely, um, I feel like there's a good chance that we're getting a Bessie Baca alliance come the merge. Um, I, I think Coco is going to be really mad at Bessie. Um, so Baca is probably going to be a bit in the swing votes. Um, I feel, hmm. well, I mean, like, yeah, Bessie and yeah, Coco are not going to mesh well together after this. Yes. Yeah. Um, if we just want to start from the beginning when, um, you know, Vessi won that challenge and that was good for them because like they finally like won something for the first yeah. time in like forever. And then, uh, you know, the whole Cody thing, I, I feel Dwight's kind of um, concern, mm-hmm. but I will say Cody was able to negotiate that pretty well. Yeah. Um, I think he all- played it perfectly, honestly. Yeah. Um, I, I, and um, like what, almost seemed like a direct attack that Coco, he was able to make it in a way where he still got a lot of the resources from Coco while making them feel kind of good. Um, and then, you know, uh, the fact that I, I think that might have even helped in the immunity challenge. They kind of created a little, like, against Coco energy, maybe. And well, yeah. really wanted really wanted to make sure Coco ends up going. So they're like, okay, so I, 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 I don't know. I feel like Cody... Um, kind of hit one domino and it created all these dominoes for for the episode yeah i mean like because i feel like with them winning that challenge and with um starting with the reward challenge and i gotta say that wasn't it cody's or not cody ryan's like strongest performance when it came to a challenge because he just wasn't able to knock over the stuff he looks um, like he's definitely gassing out a little bit uh i i i will it seems like they were the tribe eating the most too but it seems like uh at least these two challenges like and even even the previous ones like you you could tell the tribe slowed down a little bit um i wonder if uh if you know their their biggest physical asset is now um not necessarily a liability like he's still obviously really good at all this stuff but he's not at the level now of say sammy and cody who are 
able, it seems like they're handling it better. Well, yeah, I think that's part of it because obviously whenever you go out on survivor, whether it is mental, physical and stuff like that, you know, it, your skills are not going to be up to par because you are like also surviving the elements that's going to wear you down. You're going to, you know, be malnourished. That's also going to like, you don't go on survivor and you come out, um, even after like, I would say five, three days after that at peak physical condition, Mm -hmm. because like, just you know you're being malnourished you're working constantly um to like maintain life and stuff out there so like your physicality is going to go down and we've seen um before you know sometimes the muscle must more muscle bound people can kind of lose that a little bit because uh Mm -hmm. they don't have the extra reserves of energy on their yeah. body yeah it takes a lot to keep the the big muscle heads uh you know afloat that uh, jonathan was able to kind of be able to keep it because he kept winning all the rewards so he was yeah. able to slowly but then once he stopped losing rewards he'd be basically uh just couldn't keep up at that point his body had kind of made him so now you see he's, he's somehow not the strongest one on the tribe anymore or on the yeah. on the season um yeah but uh, but yeah, I I I think Ryan's uh definitely hitting the uh has hit a wall in in physicality. Whereas those first few episodes, we saw him completely destroying the challenges. Dominating, yeah, yeah. I I don't think we're gonna get that Ryan performance. Uh, like you know, maybe he might have like one little thing he might be really good at now, but. I think I think we're definitely maybe we'll see a bit of a war dog <laughs> ended in that regard of just him not quite being able to to do it as as well as what you think he should. Well, I mean, we'll see. We'll see. You never know what kind of like challenges they have in store, especially since like this one proven they're always going to mix it up. I mean, yeah, they always have their favorites, usually the bulkier contestants when it comes to like the hanging over the water with your mm-hmm. arms behind you. Yeah. Um that one is usually guaranteed to go to smaller people. Um, I mean, like, it's tough to say. And it's also tough to say because, like, with Coco, how everything, like, went down with them in general. Mm-hmm. Like, because, you know, Carla's, like, alliance with, um, you know, Cassidy and James, they're still strong. Like, mm-hmm. that, they still have the numbers because it's three against two. Um so they still have the numbers, even though they uh, got rid of Lindsay. And I just have to say, Lindsay, I know like some people were starting to come around for her, like, yeah. oh, wait, uh, she might actually do good or something like that. But like, good God, yeah, from going to someone that wasn't even on the radar to being the person yeah. eliminated. I'm like, yeah, is- I, I, I think you're underselling people coming around. People first, I, I've seen a lot of people since uh, preseason and even episode one, especially. They thought Lindsay was winning the season, hands down. They were like, there's yeah. no way Lindsay's not winning the season. And I was like, what has made you think that? Her first episode was her basically saying, I thought I could do it, but couldn't. That was her story arc in the first episode. I don't know. <laughs> like, you know. Um... Like, clearly, um, people were wrong. I mean, like, we're, we live in an interesting time where you don't really know. Like, for the past two seasons, we haven't had what I would call conventional winners in the sense of, like, they're not, yeah. like, the typical, like, survivor um, winners that we've seen in the past. Um, and I'm not talking about, like, you know, diversity, stuff like that, but I'm yeah. saying, like, personality wise. Yeah. Um, per- personality and edit, I, I think you yeah. Would, yeah. would get into uh, it too. Yeah. Um, so, like, you know, you never really know. And plus, we've seen, you know, you know, the mom or like the, I don't want to say old um, woman archetype, but we've seen like the more mature woman archetype do well in this game, given the right circumstances. Yeah. Uh, So like, you know, you never really know. And like, you know, people are going to gravitate who they're going to gravitate to. Mm -hmm. Um, Granted, when it comes to um, me looking at the survivor community, basically I have you, 
whenever I glance at my Facebook uh, group that I'm in. Mm-hmm. And then occasionally I'll watch a uh, survivor specialist. Um, but other than that, like, I'm not like on a bunch of like different chat rooms and stuff like that searching. Uh-huh. Uh, so yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, f- fun, fun little game here. I'll, I'll play uh, now that Lindsay is uh, out of the game. Who is the oldest woman on the season and what is her age? <laughs> All right. Oh, this is a quiz. Yeah. This is a quiz for you, Ryan. All right, so I'm going to list off because with four of the women being eliminated. All right, we got Which Carla. Is so crazy. We got Carla. We got Noel. We got, uh, yeah, they're all young because like I'm thinking, I'm listing them off. The young, the oldest is Ellie, right? At 31. At 31, yeah. Ellie is the oldest one now at 31. Yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad I got that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. With with Neka and Lindsay going, yeah, yeah. That's that's the she's now the oldest uh, woman on the season. Still, Mike Gabler is the oldest guy at at 51, I believe. Well, I mean, the thing about Gabe, he's not going anywhere. Uh, yeah, he, he he's making the verge like pretty it, much. It definitely <laughs> looks like it because if he makes it to that verge, he's pretty much brought along as a goat he, in he becomes a, he could becomes either you just take him out because you don't want chaos for the merge or you bring him on and he's the third place finalist yeah or, or um, loses in fire potentially depending on weird circumstances i mean yeah but at that yeah. point there's so much that kind of like plays into that who's left who is good at fire who's not yeah. good at fire and like do you want to get out a bigger threat and all that stuff it's like a very yeah. very playable intricate part but yeah to kind of like backtrack a little bit because like let's talk about the women on this season because for four eliminations in a row we have lost a woman yeah four and you know it was which was i can't it's not that i find it ironic but you know i can't help but notice that you know there were a lot of tribes that were thinking of like staying female strong um yeah specifically coco and baka and then they decided to flip on that um so like yeah yeah it's just and and i would say baka um and bessie have i think it's still a good chance of a girl going home there i I think noel she's in a playable situation with the steel vote but with cody's idol i they're more likely to risky they're they're I think, yeah, Cody and Jesse are more likely to vote Noel than Dwight's. Like, I think at least there's some connection Jesse has to Dwight's, whereas they don't have that with Noel. So I think they'd vote her. And then we've clearly seen on Baca, the guys are feeling like Ellie and Janine are condescending and thinking that they're playing this game better than them. So, and you can't uh, <laughs> vote Gabler out, which is like a totally yeah. that's the thing. Gabler would have been gone if it wasn't for that we we would have been 100 we were basically right on who we thought would be the first boost from both coco and baka <laughs> because like 100 percent, gabler goes if he does not get that day like day two idol <laughs> yeah yeah so i don't know like because it's made like an interesting point because like even like owen you know he's losing patience with gabler sammy's like uh, i, I kind of don't like like Gabler is there and you just kind of have to work with him for the time being because yeah. like it's not like um I know we did say that you know Baca seems like they may go a lot the thing is it's like they've only gone once um it's still early there's only like yeah. two more eliminations before the Furge or Mergatory yeah so it's still like playable on like how things may like go towards there but especially since after this episode it's like do the other tribes just you know work make like a tribal alliance get rid of more coco members because it's, like it seems like it's because here's the thing it's like do you really want to they've already kind of burned that bridge or at the very least cody and noel have burned that bridge with coco uh-huh. so at this point to make sure there are less numbers i guess Mm-hmm. is to you know help baka you know get rid of more coco members and same thing with uh baka where it's like okay well here's something where uh well, i don't know like it's mostly because i don't blame baka for taking advice from 
you know, someone that's willingly giving it to them. Uh-huh. Um, because they don't want to lose anyone. Well, yeah. they <laughs> they don't want to lose in general, um, because a number is a number. And the thing is, it's like, you know, you don't want to seem ungrateful but at the same time it's like because at the very least um aside from like you know mergatory when we get to like 11 there is a minimum of two different people that are going to make it to that and Mm -hmm. you know if it's a four or five split those two people you know those are swings potentially and like Vessi might want to be like, hey, you know, there's only four of us, there's five of them. Um, and it really depends on how people want to do the whole tribe alliance stuff at that point. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. I, I don't I, know. Like, I mean, I think if you're Vessi, you want Coco now to just have a bunch of people on not on the pre-merge. You like get as many people now not on the jury, so that way they might not be yeah. bitter towards you near the end. So I, I think if they have any more opportunities, I think they should try help helping Baka. Baka should try helping them. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of sad, but at the same time, it's like, hey, that's like sometimes how, how you have to play. Yeah. Um, I think if I think if they go again, I, I, I do think Geo could still be in some danger on, oh, on yeah. the tribe. Um, I, I feel like, because like I said, you still have those three. I believe Geo, let me double check. Yeah, Geo is going to, um, you know, the Card Shark Island. Mm -hmm. So who knows if he's going to wager his vote, get an advantage, something like that. But he knows that he was at the end of that. He may have not gone home, but he was not with the numbers. Yeah, Uh, we also did hear, which might indicate who gets the reward, uh, Mike Gabler saying this throws a wrench in our whole plans. Like this this changes everything kind of thing, which might indicate Janine gets this advantage and might help Ellie and Janine actually stay. That is a possibility. Owen also spoke as well. I forget mm-hmm. what, you know, like it also sounded like by what, you know, Owen said that he may have found something mm-hmm. apart from that. Yeah, maybe he has the the idol, right? That The beware. It, yeah, yeah, that hasn't been found yet. Beware. Yeah. Yeah. Or what so, if Gabler finds the idol and that's what he's talking about? Now he doesn't have a vote and he has the bullwear idol. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like Owen is more in a flexible spot where if he yeah. had it, I feel like if Gabler finds it, it would have to be a similar scenario with Cody where he Gabler would need help from like Owen yeah. and like Sammy to kind of like get the beads and stuff. I feel like Owen, he's in a much better position with everyone. Yeah. To kind of like it. I just want for entertainment, Gabler have to do it. <laughs> it would be <laughs> after we see two honestly really like good, successful, impressive like play. yeah, impressive like gameplay, like to to do it. To then just have Gabler just look at and be like, what? <laughs> and just completely clueless. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh it would be it would be funny it would be a it's a funny it's a funny like thing that would happen so so for, oh, for yeah. my my own personal entertainment i want that because, to happen because how entertaining has it been with gabler with the sense of like him just getting the advantage in general yeah. has made like a big thing in this yeah. um and then like if it is like a 2-2 split and stuff like that because gabler can't vote you can't vote off gabler it's like who out of those four do you get rid of? And I know, like, they do you go to Rocks or does, like, Owen flip on Sammy? Or does, you know, Sammy flip on Owen? Or do one of the girls kind of, like, cam- cannibalize one of each other? Uh-huh. Um, you know, it, I, I feel like because there have been four females going home at the, you know, back to back to back to back. Did I get... Statistically, we yes. should be getting a guy going home soon. <laughs> yes. Well, I wouldn't even say it's a thing of statistics. It's more so of like, you know, um, like in last season, you know, people recognize like people from their demographic were kind of like being, you know, eliminated in a row. I know it's totally different circumstances, but something mm-hmm. similar could happen this time around where especially since the you know the the women have been saying like all right let's try a female alliance and now that four women in a row have been eliminated um they might want they might want to like band together and try and like all right get 
you know reunite that uh-huh. idea yeah it's uh it's crazy that this is also happening on the season where i've drafted more women than you um it's like i i felt a disturbance in the forest where i was like no <laughs> yeah go go away from what though we are we we both have lost two people now you yes. have a slight lead because yours came a little later so technically, yeah like, you, got, you have a slight lead it yeah i will say just being on the uh for those who don't know, we did a little draft in the beginning. And so basically, um, it's kind of like, you know, the earlier eliminations is going to penalize you because like, you know, it's kind of like, yeah. um, what is it? Deal or no deal. Yeah. Where, you know, losing those people early on, especially one and two, it, it's tough because those are points you have and you only have seven more possible. Yeah. I basically now need you to lose two people in a row for me to catch up for us to be even again. Well, thankfully for you, <laughs> you're playing against me and my luck and things are crazy bad sometimes. Yeah. Like I do um like I've been doing like competitive um Pokemon for like the games and stuff. And there have been some matches I have lost just purely based on the luck element. Sometimes I've been outplayed. And I get I get that. But there were things like critical hits, effects that had like a 10% chance of happening happening to me. Mm-hmm. Or just typically, you know, it, um, yeah. my luck is bad. And yeah. I mean, see- I, yeah, I, I'm the same way, though, to be honest. I, I, I always ro- roll like the, you know, like uh, nat, nat ones and like just like these terrible, just awful. Yeah, <laughs> I same. Uh, yeah. Anywho, that aside, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I feel like, you know, with this going on, because, you know, when that has happened, you know, I don't know, because like for, um, well, on Noelle's um, drive, you know, she has no other girls that she can align with, no other females. Um, so like, you know, it's kind of like on the whim where all right, I'm working with Dwight and all that stuff and that's kind of it um obviously you know carla still wants to work with cassidy um and you know james as well but like we'll see how that kind of like plays out and then like you have um you know janine and you know ellie working together on that tribe so it's kind of like the numbers aren't on their side but they're all they kind of have we'll see who's left after like you know the when we get to mergatory from the verge but mm-hmm. yeah 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 definitely uh yeah this this felt like cassidy got some more screen time i feel like hadn't really seen her too much in the past few episodes but um mm-hmm. you know they, they they went to tribal so she was able to be, uh, be seen um uh, Ryan and Gio, I should say, uh, uh, Ryan only had one confessional on this episode, and Gio with only two, which you know, not good. I I, I would say for um, you know, your first tribal council, you can, you can't hide yeah. behind. Uh, well, they've been going to tribal councils. <laughs> yeah, there's only so much you can do with the edit and stuff. Like, yeah. um, I mean, both Ryan and Gio. Well, Ryan was like mid on my list. Gio was like a little bit lower. A little lower um, yeah. But I mean, it, it's tough to say, like, because with Gio going, if he gets an advantage and if, like, you know, Coco goes back to um, Tribal Council, mm-hmm. how that all plays out. Um, I'd say, obviously, the safest person on that tribe is, you know, Carla. She's mm-hmm. the one that's running the shots, not Gio, who apparently he thought he uh, was controlling the game in the beginning, which I'm like, <laughs> there's no way to like truly know that. Yeah, well, this, I mean, is, like, this is how impressive Carla's game is. She's controlling things without people knowing she's controlling things. Yeah, <laughs> and I feel like it's that kind of like sleeper threat mentality. Or like, you know, making sure you don't seem like a threat. And I think that's like one of the, I'll say brilliant things about Cody. He knows he's like a very positive and can seem like a very eccentric person. And therefore people aren't going to think that he has like more going on behind the scene. Yeah. Because if you 
come out like that energy people aren't going to expect that much from you and he uses that to his advantage yeah i actually really believe cody could be a jury threat like i think if he is sitting there a final three he is going to get everyone on the jury to like him <laughs> to like so much so that they'll write his name and then he'll just take the check and run and then we'll be like wait what did we just get ousted by a salesman <laughs> yeah um i do think um yeah cody is a big threat and i feel like he can be a wild card but that's more so of like he's a wild card as in like he knows what he wants to do in the game mm-hmm. um however i don't want to be aligned with cody or a cody type of person and i feel like dwight is like okay because like i know that he kind of looks out for himself and stuff like that mm-hmm. uh it's that one thing about cody and i feel like he is definitely the biggest character on this season. And Mm -hmm. I feel like when it comes to Vessi or when it comes to, you know, the Verge and Merge and stuff, he's going to be like, you know, a big uh, factor in a lot of stuff going forward. Mm -hmm. Uh, As wild cards do. I want to, he needs to at least make mid merge. Like we need, we need him to, to, to get as much content as we can out of him. I, I, I just think he, uh, Anytime he opens his mouth is just <laughs> the craziest thing has come out. It's just so much fun. Yeah, he'll be like, oh yeah, man, I was doing this and this and this. And by the yeah. way, I'm going to take this. Yeah. Uh, and let's not gonna... let's not forget the season premieres episode is named after his butt tattoo. Yeah, like they could have they could have one hundred percent done that bit in episode two, named episode two living. Um, but they they chose episode to include one. it in episode one and give him the title for it and have that like be almost like a thing that it gets called back later. So it, it is. It you know, like I do think that there is a semi strong possibility he could win this. Mm-hmm. I think yeah, he's a big personality, but sometimes the big personalities become the biggest targets yeah. and around eight through like six not even just jury management but that's when big personalities really start to go is during that part because it's like okay we got to get rid of this guy because he's a threat he's a big personality yeah yeah Yeah, maybe but also maybe they're uh thinking hey these sleeper threats are are actually our biggest problem so let's just keep taking out everyone who it could be a sleeper threat until it's just the the big characters left in the game yeah um we'll see we'll see um i do think cody i don't know like he is some wild card he is someone that does think unconventionally which can be his advantage too because if you think outside the box you can try things that people have never thought before and i the bamboo thing was you know a prime example of that Mm -hmm. um so we'll see where his game kind of goes because i do think he's definitely going to have a lot more great moments ahead Mm. um they're not going to get rid of this guy but (laughs) uh yeah this guy um i don't know like he's like i think that's kind of the thing too it's like you get characters not just in survivor but like anywhere where you watch them and when they're on screen you just don't know what they're going to do and that's the most entertaining part about them because Mm -hmm. there's something I don't want to say unhinged. I don't think Cody is unhinged. Eccentric, yes, but like, yeah. but those kind of like characters where you never know what you're going to get from them makes it interesting to watch and move forward. I feel like even if he, for whatever reason, goes out next episode, I feel like they're going to bring Cody back at least two more times. Oh, 100%. You can already tell production loves Cody. Like, if there's one person on the season that is returning, it's, it's, def- it's Cody. Cody. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, we're going to have to wait for everyone else and see where the placements are, see how much uh, entertainment value they do get. But he's already like, you can just tell production is, is you know, they want him for, for second chances too. Yeah, yeah. Um, or winners at war too. Yeah, we'll we, that would be, that would be crazy. Um, yeah. C- Cody becomes the uh, third uh, two-time winner. <laughs> First three-time winner. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, you just keep it going, Cody. You can do it. 
Then he goes <laughs> on Challenge USA season two, and then he wins that. Uh, uh, I haven't seen the new season of the Challenge. The first episode dropped, and I, I want to see it because uh, I know Michelle Fitzgerald is on it. She, uh, I haven't seen it either. I've been busy, yeah, she, busy, busy. Yeah, she she's paired actually with Jay from uh, Millennials vs Gen X. Interesting. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, and then um, so, I think there's another survivor on it, but I forgot who it was. Probably. We've been seeing a lot of them kind of, not just for Challenge USA, because that was just like competition for all the celebrity, um, like um, reality to show celebrities, but like, you know, just in general with the challenge, like with Jay, um, wasn't, um, what's his face? Not home. da 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 Give me a hint and I can help. Winner of 36. Uh, Wendell. Wendell. For thinking, for some reason, I kept thinking Holland. Uh, well, that's Wendell Holland. Yeah, I was <laughs> thinking Holland, but I couldn't remember his first name. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for, I don't know, especially since he's been on our channel and Brand Seals quite a few times. And he, uh, yeah. and especially since you brought up Michelle Fitzgerald and like those two, because they dated, kind of yeah. go in tandem a little bit. But yeah, um, yeah, I don't know. Cody has a bright future ahead of him, but we'll see um, how it fare. We'll hit win him a million dollars, at least in this season. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's definitely uh, on track for fan favorite, I think. Yeah, agreed, agreed. Like, I don't want to say I'm coming around on him, but I do. He is very entertaining, and whenever he's like, you know, on screen, I'm always like, "What is he gonna do?" And it draws me in. Yeah. Um, I do like him for that entertainment value, and I think he is a good enough player. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, should also bring up, uh, you know, we had a uh, uh, no flashbacks this episode to past stuff, so that's uh nice to, to not have to keep going back to uh backstories over and over and over again um, well i feel like because they didn't like in past seasons i mean like there would be like later on in this season when they would reference some certain stuff yeah um i mean like it's something where i get it because it does flesh out the people and it's funny because literally right before um we started this i was looking on instagram and i follow tyson mm -hmm. and he was uh talking with jerry uh -huh. um and i don't know if you've seen this but um no, i haven't so oh i know i watched something that joe hasn't this is yeah, like a yeah, first. This, this is crazy I, I will say i don't watch tyson's thing that much um I did watch the episode, the the series, the season premiere, uh, where he talked to Johnny Bananas from the challenge, and yeah. that was funny because it was getting someone who has no idea what Survivor really is and getting yeah. their initial thoughts. But uh, I haven't seen this one. So um, he was talking with Jerry, and uh, you know, Jerry was talking about how modern Survivor doesn't really do the villain thing, mm -hmm. and. Uh, you know, they really try and like humanize a lot of the contestants going in. Um, I would say, especially in like the new, new since uh, the 41 and onwards where we yeah. get the flashbacks and stuff like that, because even with villains like, you know, Shan, where very, you know, kind of that eccentric kind of like, you know, um, bright kind of villain where, you know, <laughs> um, she didn't come off as overly villain, even though she had her own little, villain theme and there was a lot of stuff that was like you know you heard about her backstory and stuff like that mm -hmm. um and like jerry was like man i wish that was kind of the thing back in you know her days of survivor because um you know one her reception after you know the australian outback and two um her getting booed off stage on uh the all-stars reunion yeah things like that um where you know because the average viewer we do build a perception of a person based off of what we see either on here on social media because that's what all the information we have to go on and yes we can even keep in mind that oh we don't truly know this person however not everyone has that kind of um insight to realize that mm -hmm. um or not everyone would like think any much anything of it other than oh you know Jerry's a bad guy, um, 
so like in modern day where we do kind of like humanize these people a bit more and there's no real like villain villains uh-huh. i would say closer to uh antagonist as opposed to villain then again i think that's just media in general this day where yeah they're, they're just uh afraid of making someone look in a bad light uh and them getting upset about it um I mean, (laughs) sometimes, unfortunately, that's kind of like the give and take of like going on reality TV in general. You're not controlled the edit and they can only use what they give you. Um, you, They can only use what you give them. Yeah. Um, So I don't know. It, It is like this balance between the two where, okay, you are signing up for reality TV. But the thing about reality TV is they're going to take the bits that's going to construct their narrative. Yeah. But that, you know, and if you're kind of like falling into that villainous role, they're going to show you in your most villainous moments. Cause yeah. you know, yeah. It, you know, and also just like, if uh, you're kind of the last person ta- to get taken down uh, and it's like the winner's big move is that you were the last one. Yeah. They're going to edit that person to be seem more like a villain to kind of make it feel like, oh, this person overcame this big obstacle because yeah. of this person, and that's what gets them to win. It, it, the last two winners, uh, I think, have struggled because they don't have that villain obstacle that you can really point to. It's just like, oh, yeah. Underdog. Yeah, yeah. It's just kind of like, oh, yeah, I guess they are they 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 got here. I guess yeah. I guess that's the that's the moral of the story is we well, we know they got here. I feel like for both um for both of them it was more so like the uh, for both Erica and for Marianne it was more so of the like underdog element that kind of won them the game. Going in there, cards were stacked against them in the especially especially during the merge because like obviously with Erica when you don't go to tribal council you don't really you have to worry. Uh-huh. about that so like but like both yeah. of them went to uh the merge with an underdog status and then you know being on the outs for the most part yeah I, and I, then I, overcoming that i i will say they it seemed like in 42 they tried to actually give omer a villain edit for the last few episodes he was in the game like he started getting a little more like scheming and sneaky yeah um to potentially help marianne like as that that is like that's the big move to take omar out here um but it just um we we had already grown to know him as this likable kind of goofball but also strategist kind of person so it doesn't play as villain at at that point like you need early on indicators of this person plans to to do some sneaky things later on yeah like ellie might be a decent enough example of that yeah um i hate that i'm targeting the uh the therapist or the psychiatrist <laughs> or he was kind of like not i wouldn't say villain but kind of had like an antagonistic edit early on and stuff and then you know um yeah. so kind of like that where it's yeah. like okay on this if, if we're talking about the spectrum of good and evil which yeah. not everyone is on the extreme of each side but like, you know, there have been people that have kind of leaned more towards the evil side or good, yeah. but it's not as clear. Yeah, this is actually a good uh, point to go into someone else here uh, who's on this current season. Carla in the preseason clearly was giving us the first day edit of villain. Yeah. And now she is completely not a villain. She is she's almost like the hero of the story in some ways, too. Like she's the, the story, like she we're always knowing what's going on with her. Work. We know exactly she has laid out who's with who, who I'm working with. Um it, even though they haven't gone to tribal, she's had a confessional in every episode. Yeah. Um yeah. C- clearly, like <laughs> like and it's not even like mean evil, like like there's nothing of that really going on with her it's like very much strict strategy and yeah we, we got a little bit of uh, personal content in for that first episode too with her with, with her and geo so yeah and i feel like with her i mean yeah she went against her alliance but the thing was Lindsay was just kind of yeah. like I, I feel like it was even worse than justine's in the sense yeah. of like Lindsay was like you know paranoid for i don't want to say for no reason because 
you know, she does make a good point where it's like sometimes the easy vote, it's like, oh, if things are easy, you know, it might be you because I can only imagine the amount of paranoia it is to play right. this game. Um, but you can't, but, you can't keep telling your alliance members that you're paranoid and you think it's going to be you. And are you turning on me? Like, no. like when, when you go into that, like the, their decisions are either, are we going to have to drag her through this game and hope that her paranoia doesn't cost us the game or do we just take her out now and hopefully you know uh we can still have the numbers next tribal yeah and and that, that, just... that, that's the better move like you know Lindsay, in my opinion was destined to get lvp of this episode i will be giving her lvp yeah. Lindsay, i feel like it was very clear cut who got what this episode yeah uh yeah, I Lindsay... said like it, I, I, if I usually don't give LVP to the person who goes home, but like if they are the reason they go home and they weren't going to go home previously, if she just yeah. stayed quiet, she's still in the game. <laughs> exactly. Like, it, I don't want to say it's unfortunate because, like, I mean, we both dra- drafted her near the end of our list. Yeah. Like. Clearly, we didn't have too much stock into her going in. Nothing against her personally. It was just like there were some other people we thought had more potential. Mm-hmm. But, um, but you know, it was something where it's just like bad gameplay got her eliminated. Yeah. Very bad gameplay on her pop um, on her part. Yeah. Um, I yeah. will say the you know MVP of this episode is Cody because of like. The no- negotiation tactic yeah. being very, very um, useful in the challenges and stuff. Yeah. And, you know, weakening the Coco tribe with that move. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, he 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 created a line in the sand that yeah. regardless of how tribal councils go out the next couple of times, if Baka and Bessie stick together and keep that alliance, uh, like that little makeshift alliance there, they can just take out Coco. Like... It, it doesn't matter what the next few tribals are like they can still just decimate coco if they want they could they could um i don't know i feel that's the only downside is because and dwight was even a little wary of this first uh-huh. is like you know don't try and burn any bridges i mean obviously the challenge with the reward of the challenge like we've seen this done before where you i know, love some this, pe- this reward yeah we've seen it done before where, you know, um, like in Pearl Island where they were kind of like very diplomatic about it and stuff like that. Uh And like, you know, it was like, all right, I don't want to like harm you too much. Here's like what we have to offer. Yeah. Um, that will be okay. And are you cool with this? And, you know, it wasn't like a dick move or anything like that. Except for Johnny Fairplay when he would do it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So other than that, it's like, um, I don't know, it's kind of like, you know, because of the way he did it too, where it was kind of, it was very manipulative because like, you know, you played on their emotion, you got them scared and you were able to not only get fishing gear, but he was being pretty ballsy about it too. It was like, oh, let me get the limes too and stuff like that. A lot of people have just been like fishing gear. That's it. Even if they did start with like the machete and stuff like that, but no, he was like, all right, let me milk as much as I can out of them. Yeah. And they got some, some extra food on top of the, the, the fruit that they had already, uh, already gotten because they, they, they couldn't cook the fish, So we don't get to see the 10 fish this season. Right. No, we didn't. Um, that made me hungry. Um, (laughs) I mean, fruit is pretty cool too. Yeah, but I mean, protein. protein. Yeah, f- f- fish obviously would have been uh, preferred. Um, there, there is a part of me that wishes that they could steal flints. I, I, I wish that they could have been able to steal the other tribes' flint because think of it, we're almost at the verge already. Vessi has been this many days without fire because they don't have flints. Like, yeah. what's the harm in them taking someone else's flint away from them? Um, so that way they can use it uh, and you first off cripple them because now they don't have their flints. Um, yeah. And then uh, they can have the fish. 
I guess because that is a thing. Um, I think because they kind of wanted to keep the Flint as like, all right, that's the uh, the penalty for losing. Yeah. As well as like losing a tribe member, you also lose your Flint as well. Um, to so I kind of see like why they didn't do that because you know they have that element to it and they probably yeah. wanted to keep that just strictly that. Yeah, um, I guess I guess I just don't care about that element of the game that much. So I just rather <laughs> than be able to to actually have like a strategic game move that they can deal with it instead of just you don't get yeah. flints. <laughs> I mean, if they made the best out of this, I don't even think it was a bad decision either because like fruit, well, obviously fruit expires, but like yeah. It has a longer shelf life than fish without refrigeration. Yeah, I mean the the situation that Survivor puts them in, yeah, they have to do that because they just don't have fire. Um, yeah, but uh, but yeah, I, I was just saying like if um if I was in the Survivor uh creative room, um I I would be like, are we are we sold still on uh having to take the flints? Like I think there could be more interesting options if if you don't have that here and you can play with the stuff like that later on. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, who knows? 44 or 45. Um, Cause like with the, with like the modern stuff they've been doing with the Flynn and stuff, like obviously they want it with the 26 days, they're trying to find ways to make it still like they're trying to compensate ways to make this game a little bit harder to kind of like compensate with like having like basically almost two weeks less of gameplay uh-huh. so like you know because i know like going into like you know them doing 26 days and stuff like that um and like russell hans even said too where it's like oh all right there might be a little asterisk next to their name or to their win because they played less days and i feel like them making it harder on the camp life is there kind of way to help like balance the scales a little bit? Because if you already don't have food, you're already fighting that hunger really, really fast as opposed to like, okay, it's like week, you know, like, okay, we're about 13 days in and now we're starting to get really low on food. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I, I obviously know that I, I, I get why they are trying to do all this kind of stuff to, to do it. But um, I just feel like, the, the, there needs to be like a strategic social some reason why this is happening and not just you lost a challenge so now you don't get flints uh, yeah cause, because that the, there's only so many options that that can go through uh but when you add in a more like like the stealing reward you can steal flint from someone now they are they can be without fire for uh the sh- it's a shorter amount of time so it's not like you're damning them for the game like yeah. it's it's uh it's still going to hurt them a lot but it's not going to but you know they can get through it they're not gonna they're not gonna die by by going like five or six days without that flint yeah yeah um yeah we'll see we'll see i feel yeah. i honestly don't have much to add other than that. yeah <laughs> uh what else is there? Because, um, yeah, Gabler. Why was he oh, just yeah. putting the th- the things on? The palms. The palms yeah. on the oh. Here's a blanket. <laughs> and then I'm like, you should ask permission before you put someone or you put something, anything, even if it's with good intention. Oh, intent wh- keep... While they're sleeping, <laughs> they're already yeah. asleep. <laughs> not only for the like creep factor but also in the sense of like you know some people might be a little agitated because they're not really getting that much sleep out there as it is yeah and now you've woken them up or disrupted their sleep even more (laughs) by doing that also like who is in the middle of the night is like you know what i'm just gonna (laughs) give everyone blankets while they sleep like, yeah, and what what what's a better blanket uh, than a palm frond? <laughs> I know, right? Like, you know, like let let's put some leaves on you. <laughs> exactly. Um, survival tips one hundred and one. Uh, yeah, yeah. I was like, come on, Gabe. Like, you're you're not. <laughs> I don't even know. Oh, Gabler. 
Oh, Gabler. Yeah, we're gonna have to check his um uh medical license after the season. <laughs> well, I mean, like, there's always the thing of like street smart versus book smart. Yeah, Gabler, you know, might be a lot more book smart when it comes to you know. Obviously, he wouldn't be in his profession if he wasn't a smart person. Um, mm -hmm. So, I don't know. Maybe it's like the social aspects or I don't know. Um, but yeah, if we're talking about edits and stuff, the edits have not been kind to him at all. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, yeah. It, it, it's been pretty brutal. Uh, they had one episode where it seemed like, oh, maybe Gabler's actually a lot smarter than we think he is, and then he pulls this kind of stuff, so. Yeah. I don't know. Gabler, he is, um, does that even, does his um thing work at the Verge? Uh, yeah, it's his first two tribal councils, so yeah. yeah I, I, now, now, the question is, if he goes but is immune, can he use does he have to use it on someone else? Does it or can it he doesn't have to use it on someone else if he wants to? He could, yeah, he could keep it as a souvenir, but I'm just saying, like, um, does, does he have the option to, yeah, does it expire even if he has immunity that that week? I guess we'll cross that bridge when, <laughs> when and if we get there, uh, yeah. I, I still think Baka goes one more tribal council. I can see that. Um, I don't know. Like, I feel Vessi now has a very strong four. Uh -huh. So I can honestly see none of them going again um, pre merge. Uh -huh. Coco has been, uh, I feel uh -huh. like morale, e even if like they're still like, you know, this was a hiccup, morale is down on the Coco tribe. Yeah, so I think I think they could still lose one more, and I would probably say it's Geo if they do go to tribal uh, again. Yeah. Um. Uh. So yeah, r right now I would say uh we're gonna get one Baka and one Coco uh tribal. Like I, I think those are the last ones before the the purge. That's a fair assessment. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um. So we might get you know an even four four four. Uh, for two seasons in a row. Which would be nice <laughs> to yeah. not just get uh, tribe decimated. Yeah, I mean, like, it's also a bit more playable um, in that regard. Uh -huh. um, and sometimes you lose really great, uh, really great characters early on because of a decimation. Yeah. Like, if you think of Palau, <laughs> if they didn't lose, like, their entire tribe until it was just Stephanie left... Like, because, like, let's say they, let's say it was, like, a 5-5 five, five split, much different game and stuff like that. And, mm -hmm. like, some of the people would have been a bit more memorable as a result. Mm -hmm. um, we'll see. Well, I mean, like, we'll see how things play out. I do feel, um, I, I'm, I'm nervous for some, but, yeah, I'm excited to see where things go from here. And I think, um that's always kind of like the fun thing about, you know, the week to week episode releases um, for stuff in general, mm -hmm. um, which I'm liking that, you know, uh, I don't know, because I know when the modern day of um, modern day, not just um, with streaming services, they would put out on everything all at once. Uh -huh. But uh, I think we're finally getting back to that uh, sentiment because even Netflix is thinking about doing it, too of like doing like the uh you know week to week thing so it gives us mm -hmm. this time to kind of like think about things going forward and all that and it builds up that excitement it's in your brain a bit longer so like you know yeah small little semi-related yeah. tangent yeah definitely yeah yeah uh you know it, there is something to you know waiting a week talking to, to your friends and everything about what happened in the last week uh speculating about what's going to happen uh in the next episode and uh in the, the rest of the season like yeah. you know there's a, there's a lot of fun and just <laughs> no idea what's going to happen but let me just say what i think's happening yeah and i feel like with the gabler thing with the um you know beware event or the beware idol that's on the baka tribe and whatever the heck cody's going to do yeah. and what 
is going to happen with, you know, the Coco tribe. There's a lot of storylines that I'm interested to see play out next episode if we get to see whichever ones they focus on. Uh Um, So, yeah, excited for that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, Okay, well, I think that pretty much covers it uh, for this episode. Do you have any uh, final thoughts or remarks? Um. All right, just uh, strap yourselves in for one wild ride because I feel uh, things are going to get crazier when we see the payoff of these stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I I kind of hope um Cody when he knows he's going to to use his idol makes the hat again, and uh, <laughs> I, don't I think want to seeing... see him. I don't want to see him give the hat to Jeff and be like, this is an idol. (laughs) I don't think we're going to see the hat again, unfortunately. Uh, It would be so good, though. It would be hilarious. It would be. It would be. It would be the best idol play. I'll call it right now. Even if it's wrong, (laughs) it'll be the funniest idol play. (laughs) Yeah. uh, I agree. All right. Okay. Well, yeah, that's going to do it for this episode. Uh, We will see you in the next one. Peace.